everyone and welcome to episode 22 of um, the Quill Pens Quips Knitting and More podcast. I am Betsy, also known as Quill Pen on Instagram and Ravelry. Ravelry. Welcome to all viewers new and returning. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you have your knitting a beverage or a snack or something. I have my coffee. It's early in the morning here and it's kind of a dark, rainy day. So it's just kind of a lazy day. It feels kind of. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would brighten it a little bit with a podcast. So maybe if it's dark and rainy wherever you are. This will brighten your day, or morning, or afternoon, or whatever. So, welcome. Let's go ahead and get started. First up, I think, I don't know. I feel like being in a different place for this new restart of the podcast um, just makes me want to change everything. I tend to change things on a whim. So I think I'm going to sort of change the format of the podcast and I'm going to do like a fiber section and then like a self section instead of the different many, many different things, just focus on that. So they'd be more general, but that might make it easier. Yeah. We'll see. But anyways, we're gonna start with the fiber section. So that means what is off, on, and will be on my needles. So first what's off, I have two things to show you. I talked last episode about my new like obsession with the planned color pooling and that I was trying it to see how it was going. Um, so I finished two things and I'm going to go ahead and show them to you. Because I don't think I'm going to write up a pattern to publish. I, or at least not soon. Um, I finished the first skein of yarn and now I'm working on the second, which I'll show you too, um, to sort of see how the math worked out on two separate yarns. And it's working, but there's still a lot of math, and I'm trying to figure out how to make that simple for different people, and I'm just not sure how to do that. And just math makes me nervous, and I'm just like so out of my element with math that I really have to think about it. Um, and I just don't want to think about it that much. So I'm kind of doing it for myself and figuring it out and having fun and playing with it. But I'm not yet worried about being serious and making it all work for everybody. So anyways, here's what I did. I have two cowls. Um, the first one I knit flat, just back and forth, um, and then finished with a three needle bind off. So here you can see I made the color on one side and I did a cable um, they are supposed to be alternating. I did one like big and then one short and then big and then short. 
that was planned. Um, so here's it. So I like this. I think it's fun. I'm going to wear it. You can just kind of wear it like this, or you can double it up to be a little. You can play with where the where the color shows. You can just kind of play around with that. So I'm happy enough with that. So that was one kind. So then I decided to try doing it in the round, which makes a different pattern, even though my numbers were the same. And I did not weave in my end. But. So this is another cowl. And it so it made that diagonal And I really like that too. I thought that was cool how it happened. So that's that. So those are the two that I finished. And now I'm working on another one because when I was figuring all this out, I was saying how I would need to do it again on another color to see if it still worked or to see if the formula worked even if the numbers changed so my mom said well if you need to do another one do one for me so she picked her yarn this is the same sea turtle fiber arts mine was 80s Glam, eighties glam. I think this one is nighttime glam, so it's black and um, has more pink. So it's pink, purple, blue. In it. So that's the yarn. So first, I'm doing the same as this one. So it's flat. And this one I'm doing a consistent cable, the same, kind of every every fourth row or something. And this is my uh, Sherlock coffee. That is from my Sherlock. So I like this and my mom likes it, so that's good. And then the numbers are different. For example, this one I think was something like 16 stitches for the color and then 60 something for the gray. And this one is 14 for the color and 70 something for the black. So I'm gonna do this again in the round but it's going to change the pooling because the numbers are different so i mean i probably could figure out how to get this exact but i want to see what happens with this just straight if i do the same formula what Pooling will happen and we'll see. So that's my plan. When I finish this one, then I'll do that and see. So these are still design projects and I'm just being really relaxed with them. Um, and I'm taking notes and figuring things out and playing. I'm not being real strict. So we'll see. And this is in my new chicken boots wristlet bag 
in the snitch snitch pattern from chicken boots this was a new this was for their harry potter release in july this is one of i got this i got another bag that i'll show you and um markers harry potter markers which i don't think i have i might have to show you anyways it's cute it's a perfect 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 one skein bag and you just put it up here and then you read and it's perfect and i like the color i wasn't sure how i would feel about the see-through fabric fabric but i really like it i really like it and it's it's strong like then your knitting needle doesn't poke through or risk poking through um it doesn't look cheap it's really nice. It's really nice. I'm very happy with it. Okay, so that's that. Let me get this back to me. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I feel very just chill. Do you feel chill? I hope you don't mind that this episode will feel more relaxed. Okay. Is that everything that is off? I'm partly on. Okay. Now, what is on is still my Caprius shawl. And I did not bring the pattern down to show you the picture. Um, because I have it memorized now, so I'm just going. Poke me not. Poke me not from Jan Smiley on Etsy. You should all get one or two or three um okay so it's an asymmetrical triangle And this is the Wonderland yarns um, in the aqua marine color. This is the MCN Queen of Hearts base. And let's see, the I am making this on size six. I didn't swatch for this because it doesn't matter for shawls so much. So she probably um, called for a six on the pattern. Normally I am a loose, like loose knitter. Um, so I tend to go down, but I don't mind big shawls. So I think I just went with the six and I'm happy with it. So it doesn't, you're supposed to just go until you want to stop. So, um, I have finished eight repeats of the pattern with this one. I've done eight. So I think I'm gonna go to 10 and see how I feel. And then we'll see from there. I'm, I'm still enjoying it. Like I'm not, sometimes, you know, when you get near the end of a shawl, you're just ready to be done. And I'm not yet there. So I'm enjoying this for now. So I'm just gonna keep going. Now I have something to talk about. Insert rant here. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Hold, hold, hold the rant. Let me show you the bag first. This is also from Chicken Boots, their Harry Potter July release. This Here's the chicken boots. Chicken boots. This is the Wallaby bag in the Hermione journal fabric. I love it. Okay, so it's soft. 
there's no um, vinyl or anything to, to give it more structure. It's just soft. And it's all journal pages made up from Hermione. If Hermione had a journal, this might be in it. And there's pictures that she drew. Or like this. I love, where's the swish and flick? Here, talks about the different, the different spells and how to move your wand. I like that. So there's all different things. And another friend bought this same bag but her fabric is put together differently, so it looks a little different, and you can see different sections. It's cool that even though it's the same, it's still unique. The inside fabric is all drawn pictures. And it has two pockets. So here is my one of I got this set had one for every year of Harry Potter so this is the first one okay let's see okay here's Dobby The time turner and the dark mark and Luna. I signed Luna because of my dog, but Luna the dough and then the Deathly Hallows. Cool. They're cute. So that's that. Um, I thought I had... I do. Do you want to see my Sherlock set? And everyone says, yes. I might not have them all. Okay, so I showed you the coffee cup, or the tea cup, whatever. This is, okay. this is the laptop. This is focused on the TV, the new TV show. So that's the laptop for Watson. The bio. This is the fleur de lis. This is the key and the uh, two, 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 one. Two, two, one, E. And I think that's it. Oh, no, cell phone. So, those are my new Sherlock stitch markers, too. Okay, so that's all the new fun stuff to show you. Now, let's open up this rant. I started a crochet, a crochet project. Right? Shock. I've been saying since I started the podcast that I am a crocheter, but I'm not sure I've ever shown you any crochet, crochet, because I'm doing this because of the hook, crochet, so knit, crochet, for me, that's how I sign it, um, but I'm not sure I've ever shown you anything, 
because mostly I've been working on my secret project and I don't show that because it's secret. So I got an email with a free pattern for one week. Should have been my first red flag. It was for a tank top. I'll show it to you. It's called Summer Rain Tank Top. I, I love it. I think it's really pretty. And it was free, so I was like, yes, I'm going to buy it. And it was from a website. So the point was you were supposed to buy their yarn to match it. It was designed for their yarn. You are supposed to buy that yarn. And it was a beautiful wool, silk, 50-50 blend. Beautiful yarn, I'm sure. It would have been drapey and shimmery and... But the one, the one sort of negative about crochet is that it requires a lot more yarn than knitting, sort of, you know, per stitch. So the yarn needed for this tank top was a lot. And I didn't want to buy that much because a wool silk blend is not cheap. And I didn't want to buy that much. But I loved the top, so I wanted to make it. So I looked through my own stash and I found one yarn that I had enough of to make this. And mine was a wool silk bamboo. Um, and it's, it's this, it's, um, Sestari. This is the, um, Island Collection in the Palm Tree, Palm Tree colorway. Oh, I'm wrong. This is cotton. Cotton, wool, silk, black. Anyways, I had enough, and mo mostly green and I think I have enough of the green to make this top but I also had two skeins of gray that I thought I could add in as a stripe or something or the edging if I needed to okay so I started crocheting right away it was the strangest construction for a top I have ever made I have made a lot of tops, both crochet and knitting, and it was strange. And I'm doing it, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go on. It was, it was, the whole time I'm like, there are better ways to do this same thing. Why are we doing it this way? This is awkward and just felt wrong and made weird lines in places. I said, okay, go ahead. So then I checked Ravelry and there was only three projects of this. One of which is this one. So two people other than the designer have made this. Only one of which had pictures and the pictures were like of the yarn. She hadn't yet started. It happens. It was a free pattern. I get it. So I finished the, the patterns like two parts, bodice and then the lacy bottom. So I finished the, the top, the bodice part. And it was way too big, way too, I didn't swatch. I guessed, my crochet is normally pretty on. So I said, fine, I think I'm a medium, I'll do that. It was way too big. And that's when you could really see how weird the construction was. I didn't understand why you do it that way. So I thought, I'm going to frog, frog, frog the whole thing and start again. And I'm going to construct it my way. That just makes more sense. That makes it, you know, seamless. Seamless. No seams. It can be done in the round. 
So I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna do the, the bodice again, figuring it out myself on the smaller size, and then I'll go back to the pattern for the lacy part. So I did that. And I think it worked much better for the construction part. It would need to be blocked. Okay. You can see. That's good. Okay. So I finished what I thought was the whole bodice and go back to the pattern for the lace for this part. No, you weren't done the bodice. So there's a strange pickup right here that you then add and go around for another two inches. And when you put it on, it's obvious that there's this line in a very awkward place. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you start here and go up and around and do the whole bodice together at one time? Why would you pick up? Because no matter how you do that with crochet, it's always going to make a line. Okay. So I thought I just kept going. Past. I was just going. You can see how this goes. If it was only that problem, I would probably frog it again, start again doing it from the bottom of the bodice and then finish and then go back and do the lace because that line where you pick up for the lace wouldn't be shown because you'd be adding the lace. But there are problems with the lace First of all, the, the lace has two parts, a column and then like a leaf, column, leaf, column, leaf, column. You seeing the pattern? Okay. That makes sense. Except. Can you see that it's off center? Here's the center, the very center of the top. It hits like right here. And then it comes down on not in the middle between the two, not in the middle of the column, just And it looks weird when it's on. Like my husband was like, is it supposed to be off? Or did you, did you miscount? And I didn't, I checked and checked and checked and checked. And then if you look at hers, hers is also off. And that's weird. And then it doesn't, it's not even, it's not, column, leaf, column, leaf, column, leaf, all the way around. It's off number. And not just for the small size, for all the sizes, it makes a double column at one part under one arm. And I understand that she was trying to hide it under the arm, but why not either make it match or fix the stitch design so that the numbers are even around. Like I've done enough designing now to know that that's not that hard to change your stitch pattern a little bit to make the numbers work. So there's this weird join at the side. And I don't like it. I'm just frustrated right now. I'm going to leave it. 
I was ready to just rip the whole thing right that minute. But I think it's still possible for me to fix it the way I want it. But it would take a lot of math. And I kind of feel like this, I like this yarn. And I feel like maybe it deserves better than this top. But I'm glad it was free. I'm glad I didn't pay money for new yarn for it. I think it could be really cute, but I'm just frustrated. I'm so frustrated with it right now. So that was gonna be a really cool thing to show you. And I was gonna, you know, finally show you some crochet and I just got really angry. So no crochet to show you right now, other than that, that you will never see again probably so that's that okay then I'm gonna show you my finished yarn again it's really finished now this is the yarn that I spun for tour de fleece and then we took it to our finishing party and you get it you put it in really hot water and just push it don't agitate it and leave it for like five minutes. And then you wring it out and you get a towel and you get as much water out as possible. And then you like thwack it on a table really hard. Thwack it and then you turn it and you thwack it and you turn it and you thwack it and turn it and thwack it. Over and over and over again. And then you leave it to dry. And it makes yarn. And that just, um, sets the twist so that when you're knitting with it or whatever, it doesn't untwist on its own. It sort of sets the twist. That's the point. So this is my Jamaica. This is my Jamaica. And this is my Luna. So that's all finished. So probably when I'm finished the shawl, my next thing will be something with, with these. I'm still sort of just playing it, playing it by ear, playing it by ear. That's a play on words. Playing it by ear. We're just going to see what happens. So my spinning that's now, I've made a new house for my spinning. This, ooh, 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 ooh. This is my fiber, and this is what it's like. So I'm very happy with it. Um, now that Tour de Fleece is over, I'm not spinning every day like I was, so it's going slower. But I also bought two new spindles. First is this. Looks like a wagon wheel to me. This one's a little bit heavier than my first one. Um, it also does not have a notch like I'm used to, but I watched a lot of YouTube videos and read a lot of like blog articles about how to spin without a notch and it's going fine. So I'm happy enough with it. It's not that hard. Um, so I like this sort of rustic look. And then I got a very cute one from Australia. This is supposed to be sea sediment gemstones very pretty um sure it's pretty it's cute um i like that this is um steel and it they this this one from australia came with free fiber she put in some um bfl so i've been i was testing it 
Let's do Miss Middle with that. This one also doesn't have a notch, but it's fine. Then for Tour de Fleece, I won one of the prizes. This was for most dedicated spinner, um, meaning I spun the most days of the tour out of our small group. Um, so this is an, a fiber sampler from Essential Fibers. So it has... I think 12 different, one, two, three, four. yes, 12 different types of fiber, and they're each its own color. So you know which one is which. So you get to test out all these different fibers and see what you like, don't like, how it spins, all of that. And I'm really excited about it. So when I finish my focused purple blue one, um, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to try my, my new Australian spindle with this. So I was very excited to win that. Okay, I think that might be it for the fiber section. So, let's move on to my self-chatter section. things I was going to discuss, but now it's just gone out of my mind. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I was going to show you this. Okay, this, my grandmother passed away recently, a few months ago. Um, and so my, it was my dad's stepmom. And so my dad and my uncle were kind of going through are going through all of her stuff. And we found this um, poncho thing that has llamas on it. Oh. It is so soft and so warm, even though it's August and I really probably shouldn't want to be warm right now. Um, but we think that my dad bought her this when he was in Colombia. He went to Colombia for a student exchange program thing. So he, he was there for a long time. And so we he thinks he brought this back. That was... Um, so he thinks he brought this back as a gift for her, um, but it's still really nice condition and I saw it and I was like, I really want that. I would really love to have that. And so they were willing to get, my parents were willing to give it to me. So I have it now. So I think it'd be really nice for the, the winter. I love that it had the llamas on it. It's just really cute. Oh, I wanted to show you. My new poncho. Okay. Okay, so I found a new author that I like. He writes kids books. I found him in the kids section for our, it's kind of a weird way to find it, for our um, local, the, the library, our library district is very disjointed, but the library that we go to for story time had a different setup for summer reading than the other library areas. I don't know. Anyways, this one had like a book and there was different things you had to do for each page. 
and each page equaled a prize from a local business. So one of them was to get um, an audiobook, listen to an audiobook. And audiobooks aren't normally on my radar. I don't pay attention to that because they don't do me much good. But we looked at the kids' audiobooks um, so that my boys could check off that page. And a lot of them were for older kids. And I saw one that looked interesting as an audiobook. And so I looked for it in the actual books and found it. And it was this book. Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyways, this is the first Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library. And then there's another one about the Library Olympics. I think I read that one too. And then I think there's a third that I haven't yet read because it wasn't at the library. I have to wait. But I really, it's really cute. I enjoy kids books and this is all about libraries and books and authors and puzzles. Like, like logical puz puzzles and Logical puzzles, games, all these things. And it's, it was fun and enjoyable, and I really liked it. So I wanted to tell you about it. If you like kids' books, which, you know, like Harry Potter is in the kids' section, um, 39 Clues is another kids' series that I really like. And, um, oh, goodness, the Mr. Benedict... I will find the title and I will put it here. Why can't I think of it? Anyways, there's another kids art that I really, 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 really like. Anyways, this is a new one that I'm adding to the list of favorites. I recommend it if you like kids books. My husband and I went to see Newsies in the movie theater. It's the, they filmed the the Broadway stage production. Um, they actually filmed it in LA, but that is beside the point. Um, so it's the stage, it's the actors. Like you see the set changes and the, you know, like the microphones tape, like it's like you're really there, but like right up on the stage with the actors. And you saw the audience and showed the audience cheering or whatever. Um, so good. Newsies is one of my favorite movies um, from growing up. I really, really enjoy it. It's a very good musical. It's good history. I, I just love it. Um, and so I was, it's only out in specific theaters on specific days that that's it so it was two days and i've been it it came out once before but i don't think it came to my town and then i was kind of looking for it and then a friend texted me and said did you notice it's coming next week and i said no thank you so we bought our tickets and we went to see it on saturday afternoon and i had been warned that it's different that they changed some things um so i was ready for that and I was warned that they added some songs and that they changed a lot of the words to the normal songs, which I think is all rights and copyright issues, which I understood. I was fine. I was accepting. I was ready for that. So that was good. I actually liked some of the changes they made. I feel like one big change was they made it actually more historically accurate for the finale, like what happened um, with the... Because it's, it's all about... The newspaper boys strike of 1899 in New York. Um, it was so good. But I was very, very, very happy and excited to see it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was not captioned. Uh, we went in and we asked because I knew that because it was filming 
the stage pr production that maybe the captioning laws don't apply and they can get around it that way. And so we discussed it with the, mov the movie theater manager and he said that he was willing to try and see because it was Disney and if any company was going to go ahead and caption, it would probably be Disney. Um, so he set it up, like he gave me the glasses and everything to see, but the movie started and it, it wasn't working. So I asked if they had um, sound amplifiers, but he said it wouldn't have worked either. Like it's all on the same. If one works, the other, I didn't understand that. One. But he said no, but he was willing at least to give me my money back for my ticket. This time I declined and I stayed in the movie um, because I was, I myself was still able to enjoy it. I knew the story well enough. I knew the songs well enough. And I had my husband there. If I was like, what is going on? That he could tell me what was happening. So I still enjoyed the movie and I felt like I got my money's worth. So I said, no, thank you. But that was, but that was a good response for him to have, to be willing to give me another ticket, a free ticket for another movie um, to replace not being able to understand this one. So I personally declined, but I was glad that that was his offer. I felt like that was satisfied. So I was disappointed that it wasn't captioned, but I still enjoyed it and I knew it well enough. So it was a fun day, date, afternoon outing to see that. My husband likes the movie too, so he knew it well also. So we both equally enjoyed it, I think. So that was fun. Next, we have one more week and two days of summer next week start of school and um we are gonna actually start school here at our house my first son my oldest son is now three and he is a typical type a likes to sit and do work very opposite of me but We've been talking about school, and when I saw them doing their summer reading books, where they had to like, they are supposed to draw pictures of different things, like draw a picture of your favorite book, or draw, like read a book about a farm and then draw a picture. He was so serious. He would sit there and he had it open and he would ask me like, okay, what is this page tell me to do? Like, well, you're supposed to draw a picture of whatever. And he'd be like, draw it and he'd show it to me and be like, there's the train or whatever. And he just loved it so much that we started thinking about school and talking about school and he wanted to start school worksheets. So one day last week, my husband was gone for a day conference and Devlin asked, can I do school? I want to do school. So I said, okay. So we did school. So I have planned a lot of preschool worksheets for him to do for school. And we're going to do a big first day of school start. So I will be starting preschool with him next week. So that'll be fun. So that'll be big new and exciting and I will tell you all about it next time I think but I should probably go ahead and stop there this was a long episode longer than I expected so thank you for joining me um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time happy knitting bye